Hello everyone in this lesson, we will learn how to adjust our theme templates to account for parents and children pages. So for example, imagine. Under our About Us page we want two new children pages named our history and our goals. Now, before we update our theme. To reflect parent-child page relationships. Let's first go and actually create the two children pages over in the WordPress admin area. So let's add a new page. Let's title this one, Our History Paste and a bit of dummy content. And here's the important part over in the right hand column under Parent instead of no parent, let's choose About Us. OK, so we are saying that the Our History page belongs to the About Us page. So let's Publish that. And just for good measure, let's create another new page and let's call this one our goals dummy content over in the sidebar. Tell the parent to be about us. Let's save that. OK, so we've created the two pages but now we need the front end of our website to actually reflect those parent-child relationships. So for example, if we use this permalink here to visit the our goals page. Our focus for this lesson is this breadcrumb box. Now at the moment it is entirely hard coded, right? So this shouldn't say our history, it should say the name of the current page which is our goals. Dot so right now let's dig into our theme code and make this breadcrumb box dynamic. So in our text editor within our theme folder, let's open up page.php, and from the top, if you look below this page, banner div, you'll then see a container and right below that, this div with a class of meta box, that's the breadcrumb box. So you can see towards the end of this division we have hard coded our history, so why don't we begin by deleting that? Hard coded our history and instead, we can drop into PHP to output the title of the current page. So let's just call the function name the title. Cool. So that. makes this text dynamic. Next let's set things up so that this entire breadcrumb box only appears on child pages. Right? Because it makes sense. That we would want the link back to the parent page, but once you're back on the parent page there is no need for this box. So back in our text editor, we only want to display this meta box div or this breadcrumb box div if the current page being viewed is a child page. Now. The first step to achieving that is by using something in PHP called an if statement. So do this with me right above this div with a class of meta box right above. That let's add a new line and let's drop into PHP and within PHP let's write our first if statement. So we just type as the word if and then a pair of parentheses and then a pair of curly brackets. OK, now, whatever we place within the curly brackets will only occur if whatever we place within the parentheses is true. So let's work through an example in the curly brackets let's maybe echo out a phrase that says the sky is blue. OK, and now within our parentheses on this line let's say if 2 plus 2 equal sign equal sign 4. So this will always be true, right? 2 plus 2 will always equal 4. So because our condition within these parentheses is true, PHP will run whatever we place within the curly brackets. So save and refresh here. We see the sky is blue but if we change our condition to 2 plus 2 equals 7, that is false, right? So because it's false the code in the curly brackets will no longer run. So now you can see we are missing. Dot the sky is blue. So what we want to do is come up with a condition instead of 2 plus 2 equals something we want our condition to be if the current page has a parent page right? Because if it does that means it's a child page. Now in order to find out information about a page like that, we are going to need to review a WordPress topic named post IEDs. So what in the world is a post ID? Well the easiest way to explain that is to jump into your WordPress 
admin screen and begin editing any existing post or page and I want to direct your attention up to the address bar. Whenever you're editing a post or page, towards the end of the URL you will see a number and that is the unique numerical ID for that post or page. In my case my are goals. Page has an ID of 24. And if I go check out the main about us page in my case it has an ID of 16 in your WordPress website. It might have a different ID number. But that's not important. What is important is that each page and post has this unique number and back in our code we can use that. Unique ID number to find out information about a page or post. So right now I want to show you a few WordPress functions we can use that are related to post I. D dot s. So for the time being, let's delete this if statement. So now we just have this m. D php section and I want you to type this out with me. Let of a WordPress function named get the id and notice the i and d are capitalized. But if we save that here, we see a 16 on the about us page. And if we go back to the our goal screen we see a 24. Cool. So this get the id function will give us the id of the current page that's being viewed but that's not exactly what we're interested in. We want to know if the current page has a parent page. So instead let's do this let's delete this line and instead let's echo out the results of a WordPress function name wp. Get post parent id and this function will do exactly what it says. It will do. So within the parentheses we give it. An id for a page or post. And this function will respond by giving us back the id number for that page's parent. So for example if we were on the our goals page and we wanted to find the idea of this page's parent. Well this page itself has an idea of 24 but instead of hard coding. That number we want this to be dynamic. So to get the idea of the current page, remember the function get the id so altogether what? This line of code is saying is get the idea of the current page reviewing. And then WordPress, we want you to use that number to look up the id of its parent page. Dot so if we save this and refresh we see a 16. And remember that's the idea of my parents about us page. And if we go to that about us. Parent page, the number we see is 0 and that's because this page about us doesn't have a parent. So this function wp get post parent i. Dot d. It will return 0. If a page doesn't have a parent. And if a page does have a parent we just get the idea of that parent page. Now that behavior will play nicely with an if statement. Let me show you what I mean. Let's bring this full circle and get back to an if statement. But before we go ahead and delete this line, I part of it to your clipboard. So beginning from the w at the start of this function name and then all the way right before the semicolon let's copy this part into our clipboard. Dot so we don't have to type it again in a few seconds. Cool. So now let's go ahead and delete this line and let's put everything together. So let's write an if statement, dot if parentheses, curly brackets within the curly brackets let's echo out and say I am a child page now. Within the parentheses, right after the if for our condition I want to show you something neat. So we already tried 2 plus 2 equals and then 4. Would be true and then some other made up number. This would be false. But obviously we don't always want everything to be a mathematical equation that evaluates to true or false. In PHP and many other programming languages there's a special boolean value if you say true, that will obviously evaluate to true. So we see I am a child page, you could also say false. But beyond that what's neat is simply a value of zero will evaluate to false. Right. Question mark so now we do not see I am a child page and any number such as one or any number that's larger than that will evaluate to true. I am a child page. 
so here's the cool part for our condition we can just paste in our clipboard because remember this function will give us the idea of the parent page and if the page doesn't have a parent it returns a zero and if it's a zero that evaluates to false. Cool. So now we finally have a bit of code that will only run if the current page is a child page. So we're on the our goal screen and we see I'm a child page. If we go to the main about us parent page, we don't see that message. So now all we need to do is move this div with a class of meta box. This is that little breadcrumb box. Let's just move this HTML to live within the if statement. So let do this. Let's delete this echo. I am a child page and right above it on this line. Right after the curly bracket. Let's drop out of PHP and then. On this line, when the curly bracket ends right before that let's go back into PHP. So now on this line where my cursor is we can have regular old HTML. Dot so now let's just cut and paste this meta box breadcrumb box. Cut it and then let's paste it right here. Cool, so let's save that and I'm on the about. A screen now, we no longer have that breadcrumb area. But if I go back to the our goals page, cool, there it is. The next thing we should work on is adjusting. This so that the words about us are not hard coded, right? Because what if we were on a child page that didn't belong to about us? For example, down in our footer. Remember we created a privacy policy page. So let's click on that. And what if we had a child page that belonged to privacy policy? Well in that case we wouldn't want our template to have this about us title hard coded. Instead we would want this to dynamically pull in the name of the parent page. Now, before we write the PHP code to achieve that, why don't we first go and create an actual privacy policy? Child page so that things will be easy to test and see if they're in the admin section. I will use the add new button and let's just create a new page and maybe call it cookie policy paste and a bit of dummy content. And the important part is that we want to set the parent to privacy policy. Okay, so let's save this and now if I use this permalink here to view that new page. Cool. So there's the title cookie policy but this back to about us link doesn't make any sense. Instead it should say back to privacy policy. So right now, let's write a bit of PHP code to make this dynamic. So let's delete this hard coded about us. And instead let's drop into PHP and let's echo out the results. Of the WordPress function named, get the title now this function name sounds very similar to the function. That's just the title. The difference between these two functions is that the title will output the title of the current post or page. Whereas get the title allows you to pass in an ID number in these parentheses and it will give you the title for that post instead of just the current post that you've looped through. So we don't want to hard code a numerical. It here. We want this to be flexible. Let's just place an X just as a temporary placeholder and we will circle back to this in just a moment for now let's shift our focus onto the href attribute. We want to replace this hashtag with the URL that points to the parent page of the current page. So within those quotes, let's drop in PHP and let's echo out the results of a function named getPermalink. So this function is similar to get the title instead. of being limited to just the current page or post that we've looped through, we can pass in a number or an ID and it will give us the permalink for that post or that page. Dot so let's also just place an X here as a placeholder. And now all we need to do, instead of having an X here and here, we just need to use the same ID number with these two functions. Right? Remember this. WP get post parent ID function will give us the ID of the current page's Paris page. Now this code that I write now is a lot to type so we probably don't want to have to type that out again here and here instead right above this. If line, why don't we create a variable that stores this numerical ID and then we can just access that variable again and again. So let's create a variable and we can make up the name. Let's call it the 
parent the name doesn't matter. We're just making something up that we can remember and we just want it to equal the number that this function generates. So let's just copy and paste this dot or you can even cut and paste it right? So now the parentheses for the if statement will be empty and we can say that our variable equals that and now we can use this variable in three places, we can use it as the condition for our if statement. So we can say if our variable right? Because if it's a zero that will evaluate to false. It'll work just the same as this. It's just less typing this time around. And then as you might have guessed we can use that same variable where x placeholders are. So right here, let's delete dot and just say the parent and let's do the same thing for this x. So get the title and then the parent and then if we save. This and refresh our cookie policy page which is a child of privacy policy. When I refresh and now we see back to privacy policy here and if I click on that. Cool. It successfully takes me to the parent page and if I go up into the address bar and visit the about us, our history subpage or child. Page. Cool. We see back to about us and if we click it, the link indeed works. Now at this point you might be asking yourself how are visitors of the website supposed to navigate to the child pages? Right? We're on the About Us parent page and nowhere do we see links to the two children pages. Well that is the exact issue that we were going to fix and work on in our next lesson. We will learn how to add a sidebar menu right about here. That automatically includes links to any and all children pages. It should be a lot of fun to code out. Let's keep things rolling, and I will see you in the next lesson.